Today, we want to look again at uh, making our monthly payments in an investment for our future. So to summarize the problem we did last time, we wanted to invest a certain amount of money each month into an account that's gonna earn a certain percent interest each month for a certain number of months. So this is partially an exponential function because the amount is going to be increasing by some percent each month. We turn the increasing by a percent into multiplication by a number. So if it's increasing by some rate percent each month, we're going to multiply by one plus the percent, the rate over a hundred, the rate per cent, rate per 100. What we found out after a bit of manipulation is that it's very difficult or not difficult, but very time consuming because each month has its own term in the expression over here. There's one term for each payment where M times R to the N minus one, that's the first payment that we put in. And we're making this calculation right after we made the nth payment. So there's one term for each payment, but after some manipulation, we got, we were able to summarize it as m times one minus r to the n over one minus r. So we did some algebraic manipulation to get this one minus r to the n over one minus r. That's the, that's the functional part of what we're looking for. So if you recall, we did some algebraic manipulation to get us to that expression. So what I want to look at today is some algebraic manipulation going the other way. So I want to look at a different kind of algebraic manipulation. Seems like a good idea, to, good thing to do since we are in fact in an algebra class. And we are now combining our polynomial stuff with our exponential stuff to get these uh, expressions here. All of a sudden the combination of the blue and the orange in the one box was bothering me, so I'm just trying to cover it up. Orange for the rise and blue for the run. The light blue for the run, it's very, makes the whole thing very Miami Dolphins. All right, so, if we factor the M out of the one term for each payment side, what we end up with is the following. So if I divide everything by M, we have the following information. We have this one minus um, R to the N over one minus R is equal to one plus R plus R squared plus R to the third plus all the way out to r to the n minus one. So today what we want to do is look at some, um, look at an algebraic manipulation of this. So let's take a look. What we have here is a division. So one minus r to the n over divided by one minus r will give us one plus r plus r squared plus r to the third all the way up to r to the n minus one. So what this means is that we, if we see a difference, we can use we can rewrite this in terms of multiplication. We can see that one minus r to the n will factor into one minus r times one plus r plus r squared plus r to the third all the way out to r to the n minus one. That's just if six divided by three is two, then six is three times two. That's just a relationship between multiplication and division. We're not doing anything fancy here, even though I use the fancy language of factoring polynomials. But if we take this multiplication, uh, if we multiply these two polynomials, we should get one minus r to the n. Let's verify that that is the case. First, we need to multiply everything in this long term, the long polynomial by one. So distribute the one. 
So if I multiply everything by one, I get one plus r plus r squared plus r to the third plus all the way up to r to the n minus one. Now I also got to multiply everything by r, a minus r. So now I'll distribute the minus r. Minus r times one is minus r. Minus r times minus plus r is minus r squared minus r to the third minus r to the fourth. And then the last one will be a minus, well, right before the last one, we have minus r to the n minus one. And then the last one will be a minus r to the n. So we're just using the distributive property, but instead of foil, where there's a first outer inner and a last, there's a first, there's a first, there's the outer, there's the last, and then there's a lot more inner stuff. But all the inner stuff cancels out. This is the same thing that we saw happen yesterday. A lot of the inner terms cancel out. And so we have the same mass cancellation event that we had yesterday. as we have a plus r and a minus r, a plus r squared and a minus r squared, a plus r third minus r third, plus r to the fourth minus r to the fourth, a plus r to the n minus one and a minus r to the n minus one. And so that all that's left over after our mass cancellation event is the first term, which is the one, and the last term, which is a minus r to the n. That's what we expected to happen. So we are just uh, used multiplication to verify that this division is correct. We use multiplication to verify our division. Because yesterday, things were very manipulative. I said, let's suppose that we know what the sum is. And then we did some stuff to it. We did a little bit of algebra, algebra on it. But this same mass cancellation event happened. So the other way that we can go about ver uh, verifying our division is to actually use division. Let's remind ourselves about how division goes. We should be able to use division to verify our division. So let's make sure we remember how division works. When we make a division problem, when I say three goes into, so I wanted to say um, 22 divided by three. If I'm looking at 22 divided by three, I set it up as three goes into 22. When we, a lot of times we say seven go, three goes into 22 seven times. A lot of times the way we'll phrase this is that three goes into 22 seven times. So that seven, we might say three goes into 22 seven times. What we mean is that we can subtract three from 22 seven times before going negative, without going negative. So what that means is that we can subtract three from 22 seven times before going negative.
So we can subtract three from 22 seven times before we go negative. And the next step in the long division process is to actually do that. We say three times seven is 21 and we subtract it from the 22. So 21, here are seven, um, here are seven threes. Let's subtract them from the 22. 21, 22 minus 21, that leaves three left over. Sorry, that leaves one left, one left over. And then the process stops. We can't subtract any more threes from one without going negative. We stop because, and say the remainder is one because we can't subtract any more threes without going negative. And so our fraction is gonna be seven and one third. So we'll have seven, 22 over three is seven and one third. We can't subtract any more threes without going negative. The reason that I frame division this way, this in terms of subtraction, first of all, it goes along with my earlier plan to cast multiplication as repeated addition. And so that means we can, that means we can subtract, uh, we can cast division as repeated uh, subtraction. Also, in the algorithm that most of us learn, there's this, this subtraction component, and I want that subtraction component to make sense. I don't want this to just be some algorithm that we know. And the reason that I want that is I want to be able to translate this same algorithm with this same thinking to polynomials, because we know that polynomials get replaced in, uh, our numbers get replaced with polynomials when we're doing algebra. So, Let's look at an example of polynomial division. So let's divide some polynomials, keeping in mind that we're going to be doing the same algorithm that we use with numbers. So it's just like when we're dividing numbers. And we're gonna use that subtraction idea. So let's look at a division. Let's look at an example. Let's suppose that we have x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x plus 2. We're going to set this up just like a regular subtraction problem, or sorry, a regular division problem. We're going to set the x minus 2, or x plus 2, and divide that into x squared plus 5x plus 6. And we're going to start by saying, how many times can I subtract x plus 2 from x squared plus 5x plus 6 without going negative? How many times can we subtract x from x squared is the part that we really care about, because we can't subtract x from an x squared. They're not like terms. So the first question is going to be, how many times can we subtract x plus two from 
x squared plus 5x plus 6 without going negative. I want to try to apply the same question that we had before. How many times can we subtract x plus 2 from x squared plus 5x plus 6 without going negative? In the same way that I asked the question, how many times can we subtract 3 from 22 without going negative? But when we look at what we're trying to subtract, we're trying to subtract an x plus 2 from an x squared plus 5x plus 6. I can't subtract an x from an x squared I have to make them like terms. I need to make x and x squared like terms so that we can subtract. We need to make x and x squared like terms before subtraction. Because if I just subtract it five times, I'm getting rid of this middle term, but I'm not doing anything about this first term, and it's going to have all these x squareds. Got to get rid of those x squared. So I'm going to make x and x squared like terms for subtraction, going all the way back to the beginning, where we only add things that are the same, and when we add them, it doesn't change what they are. And in the case of polynomials, sameness is same exponent with the uh, same variables with the same exponents, like terms. So we're need, we need to make like terms for the subtraction. So if I multiply x times the x, I'll get an x squared. So that's what I'm going to multiply by x. So I'm going to subtract x copies of x plus 2. And then the next step is to multiply. x times x plus 2 is x squared plus 2x. Just like we did in the number example, where I took 7 times 3 is 21. I'm going to subtract 7 copies of 3 from 22. I'm going to subtract x copies of x plus 2 from the x squared plus 5x plus 6. So now I'm going to subtract x squared plus 2x from the x squared plus 5x plus 6. x squared minus x squared is 0x squared. That's what we want to happen. We want to drop down one degree over here. And then 5x minus 2x is 3x. And then 6 minus 0 is 6. Now I ask the same question. How many times can we subtract? x plus 2 from 3x plus 6 without going negative. So x and 3x, I can subtract, I can subtract an x from a 3x three times. I don't need to make like terms with the variable. x and 3x are already like terms. And then I multiply 3 times the x plus 2 is 3x plus 6. So I'm going to subtract 3 copies of x plus 2 from 3x plus 6. And then we'll have no remainder. So this line here, the 3x plus 6, we are subtracting 3 copies of x plus 2 from the 3x plus 6. In this case, we ended up with no remainder. And that means x squared plus 5x plus 6 over x plus 2 is equal to x plus 3 with no remainder. We're making a statement about division. 
x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x plus 2 is equal to x plus 3. There is an equivalent multiplication that needs to be true. So this means that x squared plus 5x plus 6 must equal x plus 3 times x plus 2. So we can check that with, uh, by multiplying. x times x is x squared plus x times 2, which is 2x, plus 3 times x, which is 3x. And then the 3 times 2 is a 6. And moreover, we can see all the things that we subtracted. x squared plus 2x, that's x copies of x plus 2. And then the 3x plus 6 is the 3 copies of x plus 2. So everything checks out. 2x plus 3x is 5x. These two polynomials are equivalent. Moreover, we can see these first two terms. In these first two terms, we see the x copies of x plus 2. And in the second two terms, we see the three copies of x plus 2. Even moreover, if we have, we know that if six divided by two is three, then six is equal to three times two. But also, that also means six divided by three is also two. What if we look at x squared plus five x plus six divided by x plus three? Well, this should be x plus two because of the way multiplication and division works together. Let's do that division. Take x plus 3 and divide that into x squared plus 5x plus 6. To subtract an x from an x squared, I need to multiply by an x. I need to bring them up to being like terms. If I multiply by x, I get x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x. And then when I subtract x squared plus 3x, from x squared plus 5x plus 6. The x squareds cancel out. 5x minus 3x is 2x and plus 6, because 6 minus 0 is plus 6. Then we have to ask, how many times can we subtract x plus 3 from 2x plus 6 without going negative? And that is 2 times. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. And then when I subtract, we get a remainder of 0, just like we had before. Six divided by two is three. That is the same statement as six is three times two, and also the same as six divided by three is two. Those are all the same, that all ways of expressing the same information. Also notice that we're not doing anything different from what we did with numbers. If we think about 156 and divide that by 12, we start by asking the question, how many times can we subtract 12 from 156 without going negative? And we start off doing it in chunks. The reason that we start off writing a one up here is because we can say, we can subtract 12 from 156 10 times. So this one is actually a 10. We're asking the question, how many times can we subtract 12 from 156 without going negative? The answer is at least 10 times. So let's subtract 10 copies of 12. So 10 times 12 is 120. Here we are subtracting 10 copies of 12 from 156. The language that we use around, uh, when we usually teach this, the language that we use hides all this stuff that's going on. 
we say 12 goes into 15 one time. We can subtract 12 from 15 one time. And then we do 15 minus 12 is three. And then we say bring down the six, which is ridiculous because we could just say subtract 12 from 156 10 times because that's what this one represents. It represents tens. It's in the tens column of this whole operation. Then we're not bringing down the six. We're just saying six minus uh, 156 minus 120 is 36. And then we're just gonna subtract, we say 12 goes into 36 three times, but what we mean is we could subtract 12 from 36 three times. And three times 12 is 36. And so when we subtract them, we get zero. That makes sense. 156 divided by 12 is equal to 13. We knew that. That means 156 divided by 13 is going to be equal to 12. That means 156 is 13 times 12. And we get there doing the same things with polynomials. So that means that 156 is 13 times 12. And if we multiply 13 times 12, 2 times 3 is a 6, 2 times 10 is 20, 10 times 3 is 30, 10 times 10 is 100. Here's the x, plus, x squared plus 3x, here's the 2x plus 6. Also, if I reverse, if I put the, one th the 13 over here into 156, the 12 ends up on top. We're not doing anything new. We're just adapting things that we already know to fit with polynomials. And this is the best fit because polynomials are just like numbers, base x instead of base 10. Any questions? Usually when we're doing this, we end up writing a lot. And we think, oh, we should just do it the old way because we're writing so much. But the writing is not supposed to happen. The problem with people espousing the old way is that they still have to write all that stuff down. If we learn things properly, then we can learn, do a math class the proper way. And the proper way is to do the math class uh, well enough and make enough connections that you don't have to write things down anymore. That's the point. It's about understanding, not just robotically copying some algorithm that you were programmed with when you were a child that you don't even understand how it works. Any questions? All right. Now, in this case, we had an example of polynomial division where everything worked out. We had zero remainder because x plus 2 is a factor of x squared plus 5x plus 6. Or we could say that x squared plus 5x plus 6 is a multiple of x plus 2. But we know that things don't always work out that way. Let's suppose that we had 150 seven divided by 12. Mostly this calculation goes the same. I take the 12 and divide it into 157 and I ask myself the same questions. How many times can I subtract 12 from 157 without going negative? I see from the 12 and the 15, I can do this at least 10 times. I'm gonna write a one, but I'm gonna say 10 and I'm gonna subtract 120, which is 10 12s from the 157. So 157 minus 120 is 37. Now I ask this, the same question. How many times can I subtract 12? I can subtract 12 from 37 three times. So let's subtract three copies of 12 from the 37 and we'll get one left over. So in our division, 157 over 12 is 13, 
whole, I can subtract 12 from 157 13 times, and there will be 1 12th left over. So we say the answer is 13 and 1 12th. We can also think in terms of the distributive property. We also might look at the 157 over 12 and say, well, this 157 is just 156 plus one. And the reason that this is useful is that 156 is a multiple of 12. So I can use the distributive property to undistribute the 12 to the 156 and the one. And then I can simplify 156 over 12 that's what we know is equal to 13 and 1 12th. If we happen to see right away that 156 is the biggest multiple of 12, that's less than 157, then we should do that and not write down our division. We should just recognize when we can recognize. I'm going to adapt this fraction, this division problem, to a similar polynomial division problem. What if I have x squared plus 5x plus 7 over x plus 2? And then I do the same thing that we did before. The modification to do long division with polynomials instead is that we have to make like terms. I want to subtract x from x squared. I can do that x times. So I'll subtract x copies of x plus 2. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Two and that's it. Then I'm going to subtract x squared plus 2x from this whole polynomial. I don't like this bring down step. It's weird. I don't see a bring down number on my calculator because it's not an operation. You're subtracting 120 from 157. That's why the seven just follows, falls down because we're subtracting zero. The seven just falls down because we're subtracting nothing from it. X squared minus X squared is zero. Five X minus two X is three X. Seven minus zero is seven. And then we continue asking the same question. How many times can we subtract x plus two? Three times, same as before. Three times x is three x. Three times two is six and we subtract. Three x minus three x is no x like we wanted. Seven minus six is one left over. So when I go to write 157 divided by 12, I write my 13 as a whole number. And then I have a fraction where I take the remainder over the divisor. Or is that the dividend? I can't remember what the denominator is called. I just use the denominator. I put the remainder over the denominator. So in the same way that x squared plus uh, 150, the same way that 157 over 12 is 13 and 1 12th, x squared plus 5x plus 7 divided by x plus 2 is x plus 3, the whole number parts, plus the fraction 1 over x plus 2. If we look at the x squared plus 5x plus 7, we might recognize that there's an x squared plus 5x plus 6. So if I read this and I notice things, I can say, well, I know that x squared plus 5x plus 6 is a multiple of x plus 2. And so I can use the distributive property to undistribute division by x plus 2.
and we do the same thing that we did with numbers. The reason that we call both of these division problems is because they're using the same operation. It's still division. So the same thing happens if we try to divide one minus r squared, or sorry, one minus r to the n over one minus r. I'll do the same division. One minus r is gonna get divided into one. And then I just have to have all the extra stuff. This one has zero r and zero r squared and zero r to the third, all the way up to minus r to, r to the n. First thing we do is how do we subtract? We can subtract one from this polynomial one time. So there's our first term. And then we multiply. One times one is one. One times minus r is minus r. And then we subtract. One minus one is zero like we planned and zero minus a minus r is plus r. Plus all the rest of it. But the next term, I, can, I have to, to subtract, I can do this r times. And then we continue. All right. That's gonna do it for today. Just a quick reminder that division is division is division is division. It's the same operation, whether we're dealing with polynomials or whether we're dealing with numbers. That's gonna do it for today. Uh, everybody have a good day. I'll see y'all on tomorrow and thanks for playing.